Let's go! Who's up next? Welcome, Internet, to the Xbox Empire podcast, part of the Play Some Video Games Network of Podcasts. I'm Elaine. That's Donnie. It's video game time. Maybe? I don't know. We don't talk about video games on the show like 50% of the time anymore. Yeah, it's pretty common for us. <laughs> that's fine. How's your week been, dude? Uh, How's it going? Yeah, it's pretty good, actually. I, I oh, really don't have good. any complaints today. I, was, I went to work early today so I could get off early and come home early. Uh-huh, early, as one would do. And then um, I came home and we had some work to do. And then mm-hmm. I just bridge straight from that work into trying to create a a intro trailer video. Video. Yeah, buddy. Which is great. It's all sexy. Devin likes it, which is great. Like that's that's a high bar. Mm-hmm. Um but I've done that all day. <laughs> like that's what I've done since like four o'clock. <laughs> like I, I stopped briefly to cook dinner and then I came okay. down and that was it. So I, I feel I feel great. It's an it's fine. I'm not complaining. But I am in like that weird space where I haven't really thought about Anything what else? I'm going to say on this show <laughs> until one minute ago. Like I just realized I was like, oh yeah, I Oh, we have to talk about it's funny because I've had a day and my brain is just kind of like Buh. I don't know. Let's call it like uh waterlogged, but in a very particular way, right? So my okay. brain's like, I'm a little over this whole thinking thing today. How yeah. about we don't? And then I'm like, look, brain shut up you're fine like here's the show notes and i have so i'm basically in the same place so we're just gonna hold on to your butts kids <laughs> that's where we're at i went today. to go tell my wife hi because i heard her come in um a few minutes ago and i went to our room and all the lights are off the fan is on and she's under the blankets wow. don so. is reading in bed and on my side of the bed the nine-year-old is also reading in bed and i had to be like you have to go to your bed before right. i go to bed yeah. and she will but like they're both laying on their backs heads on pillows holding kindles i'm like are you if anybody had any question that child is his most certainly his <sighs> you're a mess you're all yawny you're a mess Me- yeah that will help <laughs> it's just <laughs> i should have started drinking sooner that's the problem booze will help booze always helps i guess i don't know i don't drink it anymore so i got nothing it's four thousand degrees here how's atlanta <laughs> <laughs> It's stormy here. It wasn't too hot. Yeah, same. Like we had the same. Mid-90s. It wasn't too hot. Okay. Yeah, we were high 90s, and I don't know. You know when you walk outside and it feels like you can cut the air with a machete? Yeah. It's that today. Yeah. That's I just Georgia. Out. Well, yes. Today it got to rough. 90. That's actually colder than it is in New Jersey. We've actually had, you know, for... <laughs> uh, obviously, I'm not saying this to, uh, to act like I don't believe, but for all the global warming stuff going on across the globe... We've actually had a pretty mild summer here in Georgia. Oh, have you? Comparatively, oh, have you? Comparatively to what I've what I've seen in the past, there've been, uh, I think, the year before last, we had like a month straight of over one hundred degrees. Um, it's been so hot here that I went out into my unair conditioned garage to move a few items around, and I sweat through. Oh, yeah. all of my I mean, my it's clothing. still like, humid and hot. Through. Don't get me it's, wrong; it's still humid. Well, it's and hot, Georgia. But yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's it's not as hot as I've seen it. Um, we've wild. had a lot of days in the 80s, which is pretty mild for Georgia. Cool, cold. You need a hoodie down there. We get a lot of. <laughs> we get a lot of. Uh, we've, we've been getting a lot of rain. We've had a I'm lot jealous. of rain the last five or six months. We've gotten some aggressive storms, but we definitely have not gotten as much rain as I would like, and my lawn would probably like. Mm. Um, uh, but tonight we got. It's funny because I messaged you. We had. We were under a severe storm warning, and it was like ugly and it clipped us just to the south and we got so lucky so nice. no hail for me we got a lot was, of lightning tonight yeah way more lightning than most way, yeah way, way more than normal really loud what? crackling lightning for about welcome an hour. to the xbox weathercast right right <laughs> i don't so know people love to what... hear people talk about this, about the weather if anybody wondered what grown adults talk about when they're trying to get their brains turned on it's the weather it's the that's weather. the only thing we know how to do yeah. it's like hey jim how's the weather how's the wife like yeah. it's what we know how to do so <laughs> especially business people hey how's your golf swing doesn't both of them are stormy 
Oh. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Both of them are stormy. That's the worst. Do you do you play video games anymore, or do you just edit videos? I've played a lot of video games. games. I've played a oh, lot yeah? of video games this week. Yeah. I, um... Okay, wait. Wait. How much of those video games are you still playing Dying Light? That's a lot of it. I'm almost <laughs> done with the campaign Dying Light. Oh, wow. Holy crap. Yeah, I've played a lot of Dying Light. Dude, that's... I'm Dude, really digging it. We, we have to talk. There are a lot of video games out right now. You know, I tried to play The Ascent. And I went and booted it up. And I played it for about 15 minutes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I more or less realized that the only reason I'm playing it is because we have this show. Yeah. And we record this yeah. show. And yep. I feel some compulsion to talk about a Game Pass game. Which I'm sad to report that I didn't. Like, I'm not going to. Because I played 15 minutes of it and I was like, I don't really want to play this right now. I, I actually am sad about that. And it's making me not even wanting to install it because I haven't gotten to it yet. Because you were so hyped for that game. Yeah, I know. And, hey, and you hey, like to make it you so feel little. Better, to make you feel better. Sean loves it, apparently. Okay, all right. I'm okay. listening to Sean. Right. Sean is all in and I'm just like, all right. I, I'm not. It looks You're so like, good, though. So that's the thing. It has nothing to do with the looks. Like, visually, it looks great. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just not, like, really hooked by the by the actual playing it part yet. The loop. Sean was saying how, like, uh, like this war- Like, I got to the part where I got to see some shops and stuff. I don't know. Sean just seems like he's having a much more into it experience. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'm just not into games, Elaine. You and what? Dev are what? all excited about Axiom Verge. Axiom Verge, too. I played Axiom like- Verge. I'm just not into it. I, I don't I, I don't think it's anything about that game. I'm sure the game is fantastic, as the world says. I just, are you just I, saying... I played it for a couple hours and just wasn't into it. It's not you, it's me? Is that what you're saying to know. the video game? Yeah, it's not you, it's kinda. me? Kind of. I mean, look, it, and I've said this a million times, right? Whether or not a video game clicks with somebody is dependent on essentially two factors. One, whether it clicks with them on a personal level, and whether it's the right time for that video game for them to be playing it, right? Yeah. Because, like, for me... There's been what I've called like right game but wrong time syndrome, where it's a great game, but the time at which I try to play it, I bounce off because it's just not what I want. It I'd be very interested to hear you play the the ascent and like maybe I need to. I guess I need to check it out. I'm thinking like I need to play it longer. I think like I'm only two games. or three hours in. Oh, maybe that doesn't just seem not, like enough. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't seem like fair. But like after two or three hours in, it's like I don't want to like you know you 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 open the door. You go and mm-hmm. shoot the stuff. You go to the next well, door. You open it. You you're describing Gears stuff. of War. Like you're describing all video games. Yeah, but Gears you of War shooting stuff is more fun. That's that's a different conversation. <laughs> okay, so you don't enjoy the twin stick shooting stuff. Is what it's you're just telling me. yeah, it's that's just right. pretty much the same. That's I don't okay. know. Oh, Ryan uh, says it's not really for him either. He I says my thoughts echo his. Wow. So you're not alone. So I, we I need, need to, to trade. Okay. We need to trade. I need to yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sean would be like, okay, I guess. I don't know how this would Ryan, work. mine's um, broken. <laughs> so this anyway. This is ridiculous. This I, is ridiculous. I I'm started upset. playing. Uh, I kept playing Dying Light. And mm-hmm. I just played it. Like It's the game that I'm playing in large amounts of chunks of time. So I, just, I played like five hours of Dying Light on Saturday. Because it's what? great. And it, it Was runs it great on my, fanta- on my laptop. Here's the thing. It crashed on me. It's still crashing like left and oh. right. It's crashed, I mean, like, yeah. it's crashed like 10 times. Like, I've yeah. basically realized if I play it for longer than 90 minutes, it's going to crash. <laughs> like, it just, games, guys. it's like it needs to be reset or something. Like, at yeah, least well, it has some it, autosave. That sounds like a memory leak issue to me. And it's just like, there's only so much that they're going to fix about that game. Um, it sounds like that because they're like, screw it, we're working on the next one. You know, what's really cool is they flooded the world full of promotions for the next one. Like in Did the game, really? it's like, are you dying to know more? Like all over, oh, like all over the walls, no, all over the buildings. That's not cool. It's, that's, I think it is kind of cool, actually. That's some real, like far future Assassin's Robocop Creed level. Do that. Bo- like Watch no, Dogs should no. do that more often. Watch Dogs should do that. Yeah. Assassin's Creed should not do that. It's really <laughs> cool in sense. like games where you can kind of, you know, because it's like graffiti. Like, honestly, if you're not reading sure. it, you won't even know because it just looks like graffiti and all the other graffiti that's there. Didn't EA do this with billboards and burnout and like background and bur- like they had promotional stuff for like Coca Cola or something? Yeah, as I said, they, they had in, ads, like, but not like ads. not like teases. I know, but like it's still an like the ad. Last of Us should have done that a lot more. Like put more like nods to like the future, or like like any sort of like series. I think that's cool, especially if you know what you're working on next. Well, it works if your project doesn't get canceled or something doesn't happen. I like it if they back patch it when the new thing is announced. That's and that, yeah, new. that is kind of even cooler. That's but I mean. 
we yeah. really shouldn't be surprised. They patch dying light like every third day. Because they keep adding ridiculous like nonsense to 18 it. Like games don't... attached to Dying Light as DLC. Have you looked at the DLC list? Dying Light is basically it's a mess. Dying it's Light is mess. basically The Walking Dead, Left 4 mm-hmm. Dead, Skyrim, mm-hmm. Blades, Rage 2, Mirror's Edge, Far Cry, Mirror's Parkour. Edge. Just there's it, it, between all the DLC that they put in, yes. Back for Blood, and the actual game, it's just all of those games. You just buy one game and you get like twelve games, like a bundle. Except none of them work quite right, they and I love run Dying Light. Super well. None of it runs well, and none of it does what you expect it to do, with the exception of the parkour aspect, which I like very yeah. much, and it's yeah. exceptional. But yeah, they're all kind of broke. <laughs> they're yeah. like they're like dollar bin versions of those games. I don't want know? to spend too much time talking about such an anyway, old game. I don't think anybody cares. Who cares? But I'm playing uh, well, it, and I am having a blast when it when it runs. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. When it runs. I started reviewing a game. Oh, this is but new. Tell me more. I'm actually Are you excited. To talk? I'm actually excited to talk to you about this game. Oh, I Elaine, know. is it possible? Sir. Do you think it's possible I'm that looking. I could intrigue you to playing a golf game? Tell me more. Tell you more. Okay. Tell me. I mean, make me the pitch, right? Like. Y- Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, like, make me the pitch. Simple golf game, two D side scrolling, very much like golf games we've seen in the past. I actually wanted to look up a few to give you examples. The only one that comes immediately to mind is Worms Golf. Okay. But like, there's a bajillion mobile games just like this, where you get the ball. Okay. It's got the Angry Birds type of mechanic where you launch oh, the ball. It's like okay. kind of a physics thing. It okay. bounces off of walls. So this is not like what the golf, where it's like weird golf. correct not not putt okay. putt not what the golf okay okay this is I'm that, that angry birds worms style golf. golf there's there's a thousand golf games like mm-hmm. party mm-hmm. golf is another one plays uh, they golf. all play the same way right okay so then what makes this so special there we go this is the elaine part i Let's am go. playing and reviewing a game embargo's up embargo's up the fifth so i can talk about it endlessly it's no it's not out yet i'm playing a game called golf club wasteland Oh, you definitely need to tell me more with that. This game is a post-apocalyptic golf game. Mm -hmm. Um, I have notes. I wish I wish this is actually what I wish I had sat down and thought on for a little bit. Are there zombies? What kind of post-apocalyptic? No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there first. Okay. All right. I want to. I want to. Here's the thing. I think it's perfect as a Switch game, and I would recommend it on Switch. I'm playing it on PC. I don't have the Switch version yet. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's a very small game. It's a very simple game. It looks okay. like a Unity game. It's very, very simple. I don't know if it's Unity or not. It just looks, to me, like I know what that Unity foreground, background vibe, kind of, yeah. yeah, it looks like Unity to me, but who knows. Um, lost my train of thought for a minute. Long pause there, buddy. Your brain there's is a, like there's a jello. Lot of, yeah, there's a lot of places <laughs> I want to go, but I, I all right, uh, again, I think you should play it on Switch for one specific reason. When I when the game comes out, I'm going to buy it on Switch for one specific reason. Okay, okay. Right, here's the cool thing. It's that golf game, that simple mechanic golf game, mm-hmm. but it has a story. Like a good one? Yeah. Like a weird one? So here's the thing. Earth uh-huh. is on the verge of destruction. The great calamity has happened to Earth. Mm-hmm. And the so remaining people that could survive, correct, okay. have left and they've all fled to Mars. It's always the billionaires going to Mars. Anyway. It's exactly continue. the billionaires going to Mars. Like, it is it's that. Always... That okay. is a part of the story, is the billionaires yes. and their rocket ships. Oh, they have weird. this like great this. escape where they okay. leave, but for whatever reason, these billionaires, they come back to Earth to play golf on the leftovers in the remaining. So <laughs> while you're playing golf, okay? Okay. okay. Here's the part you're going to like. This is why Let's it's a Switch unpack. game. You listen to a radio station called... Um, <sighs> Radio Nostalgia on Mars. Oh, dude. And it's like Laszlo, GTA. It's kind of like this NPR program where oh. the guy is on Mars and they, they're telling you life accounts. I wrote, let me, let me get my notes. How dare you? How dare you take notes like an adult? NPR-like radio show with uh-huh. interstellar-like interviews on how life was before on Earth. So you hear these people who are on Mars reminiscing about- of the way that it was on earth before they left and in between you get these little cut cut commercials about okay. life on mars like you can only like- take a shower for 30 seconds because there's no rain on mars there's no water 
So like, or like, uh, like food rations or I'm very excited right now. There was a, <laughs> a, a fight over a board game in Annex three and like people cannot play <laughs> board games together anymore. So like you have these <gasps> NPR like things and then oh, in good. between those, they have music and the music, this first, the first song I actually really love. I wish the, I wish the rest of the music was more like the first song, but the first song is called take my hand. It sounds like, like a Florence and the machine, like pop and in, industrial type of thing. Um, electronic. There's also like some techno. There's like some folk. Done. Um, We're done. Let's there's go. some acoustic sunrise it. stuff. Yep. One part that I don't like as much, but like it works with the story, is sometimes these people will come on and they'll tell you of songs that they were sung when they were little by their parents before they left, and then okay. they'll sing them. So they're oh, just like people a cappella singing into the microphone, but they also like don't have. It's not like a radio station. They don't. They're not like spinning records. Right, right, so right, they're right, also right. trying to like make do with what they have, and it has like these interstellar vibes while you're Look, listening. This is all right. Yeah, no. When's this game out though? It's it's <laughs> out like, uh, September. It's like the first week of September. September fifth, uh, okay, ninth, good. tenth, something like that. Perfect. They delayed it, so I don't I don't remember. I could look at the notes, but I don't have it in front of me. I just um, need to know because this sounds. You're right. This sounds incredibly my jam. It's, it's, it's super weird. On and then Switch, the action, it's perfect because it feels like you're listening to a radio station or a podcast. And oh, when you're like holding, kind of feels like it should be something like you do on the go. Like okay. I can imagine as a mobile okay. game, it'd be really great. Like if you're on the bus and you whip out your switch and you throw this in, because it's real yeah. short. I'm almost okay. done with it. I think I'm on level 30 out of 35 or 37, and I'm only like a couple hours in. You'd be the game two or three hours. It's really short. Okay, That's it's also perfect. really cheap. I, love it. I think it's 10 bucks. Excellent. Yeah, it's super That's cheap. Perfect commute game because you're not like. Yes, that's the kind of game I want for a commute. This is but very But it's one of those things jam. where you won't want to turn it off when you start, because like the story oh, keeps yeah. going as it pieces things next to next so you kind of piece all this stuff together what happened who's in control what like they're like here's the thing though it's oddly like the quality of the writing is really strong because it feels oh. realistic okay that's where the interstellar okay. vibes come from because it's not like some wacky zany alien race on mars or something like that like it it feels real like humans have really inhabited mars and like you hear their struggles Try there, there's a uh, okay. I don't. Is it like spoiling? <laughs> Probably the game's not even out yet. Don't let me. Like a mom it, talks you know? about having a baby on Mars. Okay, that's that's okay. That's bad. so they like they went all in. This isn't like written to be weird. It's written to be like as close to what a, a real scenario is. Like yeah, so it's grounded. That's a good way to put it. Which is compelling. Mm -hmm. I think so too. I love it when games do that because it gives you like a basis of reference that makes sense to your current situation in a weird one. And yeah. I'm a big fan. I'm a huge fan of that. So the golf part. Um, yeah, tell me about the actual video games. I have some issues game. with... They're minor, but they're there. Okay. Um, it's fine. Again, it plays like those other games. So, I mean, it's not too complicated. Um, it's just that... So, okay. So you play the golf the environment reacts to the ball. So when you're putting on different surfaces, the ball will roll faster or slower. Like if you're putting okay, grass or dirt sure. versus like on a concrete floor or a building. Um, but once you get into the game, I think probably past the first 10 levels or so, the developers get really specific with where you have to hit the ball. Uh, and they give okay. you like little platforms that you have to land the ball on and you have to, like there's no other course. Like it's not like you can go out of your way to kind of do your own thing. Which I don't like as much because it, then it feels very, um, well, paint by numbers, but also like it takes the golf part out of it. Like you're not really golfing yes. at that point. At it's that point, you're platforming with the ball. Like, yeah, platforming with the ball. And uh, yeah. one thing that I appreciate about the game, but is in juxtaposition with what I just said, is that the shot mechanic does have some variance to it. It's not okay. like, it's not completely accurate or accurate not the right way there's some variation to when you hit the ball like it's constantly kind of wiggling like your arrow your aiming mechanic oh so there it's not like uh consistently you like, don't have full control you can't repeat the exact yeah. same thing and you time. can't like see where you're aiming you have to kind of like judge it in your head there's no target okay. on the other end of the of the arc you only get to i like see. that i do too but the problem like is that. when you require somebody to specifically Decision. land it like on a very small platform, yeah, that gets a little annoying. 
tedious um, would be the word I would probably use. Like, there's yeah, several I mean, times I where it. you have to hit it into a barrel or into a pipe or um, there like, and I do appreciate the level design. There's lots of hidden secrets and you can like use elevators or buttons and things like, and like, it's kind of cool, but mm-hmm. it's very scripted and it's like, you have to go this way, um, which kind of takes some of the golf out of it, I think. Um, it's using golf loosely. Like, it's like doing what, what what the golf kind of did. It's not the real, like, it says golf, but it's not golf. Do I you do know appreciate I mean? that, like, uh, like, the pars, the holes, like, if you're trying to, I'm trying to collect everything. I'm trying to get all oh, okay. the, like, every time you beat a hole and you do the challenges, you get a diary. So I'm trying to get all of those. And every time you do that, um, like, they have a par, like a challenge that you're supposed to hit. But it's not mm-hmm. like golf. It's not like four and five. Like, a hole might have, like, 20 because it's just really elaborate. Which yeah. brings me to my my biggest my biggest pet peeve about this game, and I feel like I'm giving you like a full review, and it's not even out yet. You are. Um, my <laughs> biggest pet peeve that I actually did write the developers and, and let them know, um, and they told me that they were split on it, which made me feel a little bit better because at least I'm not hmm. the only one. If you're trying to do like all the challenges and you screw up and you want to restart, when you hit the start button, there is this slow pan to the stars as the menu comes up. And then okay. you have to navigate to the restart option and then restart and then the slow pan down. And if you're somebody like me who's a perfectionist who's trying to get it every time and you're like restarting every time you screw up is really slow. Like it'd yeah. be great if I could just restart, like just let me yeah, hit like a button a quick and button. restart. And, yep. and uh, yeah. I was told that they like the fade because they think it's like dramatic and cool, like it looks sure. cool. But then there's like apparently half the devs are like, no, but it would be nicer if, if and actually, you quick. actually there's there's like a, a game dev like in the code. There's a game build that the devs built where you have the option on PC. Like you can't switch it over. You can't yeah. do it. So like that's how torn they are is it's in there. <laughs> they just aren't giving it to they you. They just yet. haven't made it available yet. But it would the, be nice if they gave you the option. There is a know, story I mean. mode, though. You don't have to play on the challenge mode. In the story mode, you just hit it as, wherever and as many times as you want. Like and just that. listen to the story and just play. Oh, I see. Okay. Which is cool. I, I actually, there have been there have been a few times I've considered, I haven't done it yet, but there's been a few times I've just considered like, all right, I'm done with this challenge thing. Um, because like, I, I think I restarted one hole like 30 times. Yeah. I feel like if I was playing it, I might do story first, especially if it's short and then walk through challenge stuff when I'm, yeah. w- when I want to do that. That's totally the way I ingest games like that. I don't like to, I want to listen to the story and not sure. be distracted the first go through. And you if might, it's a long game, that's different. And it short might game, provide some replay value, do the story yeah. and then come back and do the challenges. Yeah. But you like, I'm, I play these games all the time. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do the challenge mode. Sure, and I've done yeah, them so far. Know. I'm almost done and I've got them all, okay. you know, all so right. like, it's not like out of reach. It's not impossible. Um, I want to play this. Just a little I tedious. want this now. It's fun. I would like. It's really now. good. It's really good. I, so I many knew. Games we play. I wish I could play some of the music for you. Because oh, one of the yeah. first things I asked them was, I was like, "Is Radio Nostalgia on Mars like going to be on Spotify? Like, you're definitely going to put this up, right?" And they're like, "Oh yeah." And I was like, oh, "I'm going to buy the okay. hell out of them. Buy the entire album." Okay. Yeah. I could even argue like if you don't want to play the game, you still should just, just buy the album. The you just listen I... to this. I hope the stories and everything are included in the album. Oh, that would be really cool. I feel that way about like Axiom Verge's soundtrack. It stands alone outside the game for me very, very nicely. There was another one, The Mummy Demastered. Oh. That was an okay Metroidvania, but the soundtrack is bomb. And I I feel like there's some games that that just happens with, and I love that when that happens. Cool. Makes me very happy. But I I reached out to them when this game was announced months ago, and I've been kind of talking to them for a while. They're really nice nice guys like the guy in pr and stuff i i wrote him i think i i linked him every golf game that i've ever reviewed or talked about and then i and i i, I threw my my new tagline i said if it golfs i review it and he was I like, like that he was like i love that he's like that's I like great that. look if you have friends get me in on this and i'll review it too we'll yeah. see how the non-golf person he said he was still gonna send it. me codes and i'm gonna buy yeah. it anyway so i might yeah give i'll buy it on switch away. but i would love to i might give to copies away out. yeah sweet it's a fun game that sounds good man I, it's I, uh, the it is the writing, the writing mm-hmm. sets this apart. Like if it didn't have the writing, even if the music was cool and it just didn't have the story, this is a good indie-ish golf game. You know, like but yeah. the writing not you know just brings it up up up, up a bit, makes it stand out I in a way it. that I don't think many games do. And I really I love, enjoy the little story. It's fun. I love games like that. I'm excited to check that out when it comes out, as if I don't have enough video games. And I love this. It's a weird mechanic that I often don't, I don't think we get enough. Like, this is one of the things, reasons why I love GTA. 
Mm-hmm. I would just roll around that city doing missions, radios. listening to yep. Laszlo, these stupid stories, and it was hilarious. And I was like, yeah. why don't we have more of that in games, actually? That's a good point. You I know? would love that. I loved it in Fallout, when you would get the the Fallout 3, you would get the yeah. radio station. Yeah. And it was like, it was there, there it was for a storyline, but I mm-hmm. liked it. It was, you know, it's fun to, that makes the world feel lived in under the very specific circumstances that you're in and i really enjoy that so i wish more games would do that i was doing it in Watch Dogs before i before i quit right. on it before you quit Watch Dogs. and the, like you know but the podcast and Watch Dogs, i didn't feel like were as entertaining i liked it in spider-man i liked it in spider-man yeah like the podcast yeah no no the podcast were good yeah it was good, good call. spider-man that's that's another one that i feel like adds to the whole like spider-man is a young person yeah the city listening yeah no spider-man did thing. it better than Watch Dogs for sure yeah yeah definitely yeah Spider-Man did a great job with that. Love that. <clears throat> Love that. What about you? I uh, I continue to play Ender Lilies, which is that Metroidvania that I discussed last mm-hmm. week. I think I'm getting towards the end of it. I um, really like that game. It's not perfect. Like it's got some problems. There are some, maybe I would argue pacing problems there, where you get a bunch of movement stuff. What feels like more than halfway through the game. You could argue that every Metroidvania does this. It's just that that stuff makes movement so much more fun that I wish I had it up front. Mm -hmm. Like having a dash and an air dash instead of a really clumsy dodge that you start out with. Like it's significantly different. Um, But man, it's got that challenging game aspect where you run up against a boss and get trounced and then have to figure it out and pattern match. And when you do it, you're like, that's to drop the controller, hold your arms out, queen of the world feeling. I love that. It feels so good. It feels so good. I almost put it on my wish list, but I went and looked up a couple of reviews after you started talking about it. And I realized that I already had watched a review and checked a review when it came out and released on Switch Up, which was one of my my favorite um, YouTube review channels. I think they do a really good job of being thorough. And uh, I remember they kept talking about, um, at least on Switch, some minor performance issues, but really the animations that they compared to, they said it was like, like kind of flashish, which when I watch it in play, I kind of get it because the characters do kind of have like, um, like a cutout look yes. and like when yes. she rolls and stuff, like it kind of, you know, it doesn't look fluid. I mean, I think it's intentional, but it does kind of give off that look. Does that, that I, that I assume hasn't bothered you at all. No, I don't mind it at all because the character spirits that you use for attacks flash in and out anyway. Hmm. And I'm never really paying as much attention to them as I feel like I need, you know, but I guess I like that layered almost sticker like quality. Yeah, it is very sticker. I, I like that. It. Yeah. I, yeah. It almost feels like they've been stuck on the backgrounds and I, I actually dig that visual style. Um, so for me, it works, and I like all the particle effects that they do for like fire, and uh, that stuff is amazing. Oh yeah, it looks really good. The water effects are great too. All oh, the backgrounds are the backgrounds really, are really great. Yeah, it's also got that kind of music that is haunting and sticks in like in you. There's it's like Nier's music in that way, where it feels like it just uh, sort of penetrates the world and belongs there. You know, like just it's it's odd. It it just where do you think it music- ranks? Like in the difficulty scale, how is it compared to something like a Hollow Knight or a Death's Door? It's not as difficult as Hollow Knight, but it is harder than Death's Door, boss fight wise. That probably and means sometimes, I'm out of it. yeah, I think you would be out of it. Some of the areas that you have to traverse as you're opening, like you kind of loop back on yourself and open shortcuts. I mean, it's a Metroidvania, right? Yeah, but yeah. when you have to make runs through rooms, it can be it can be like a lot. It, it can be difficult. Um, I find that very satisfying because like I Ori. learn the. Sure, kind of, yeah, and you learn the path through the space, sure, and exactly when to attack and do what and what works. So I like that, and I also find the boss rooms are usually right next to a resting point. Like oh, that's there, good. there's, you can just rerun the bosses. So over if you die, now. you're not losing. You have to go all the way. That was one of the things in Death no. Store. Some of the times, I would have to. A few times, I had to come all the way back. Yeah, once you unlock all the shortcuts in an area and you hit like where you would go to the boss, you're usually within one or two screens of where you need to be. That's pretty And nice. oftentimes there's no combat or there's avoidable combat in that screen. So, I, look, I really like it. It's got like an interesting mix of some of Hollow Knight's characteristics and music from Nier, and it gives me vibes that I just really enjoy. And man, the right Metroidvania will suck me in every time. Like nice. every time. So, I'm enjoying it, man. Like That's kind of it, though. 
that's my next step. Uh, that's my next plan is to play Axiom Verge until I. I'm excited for you flames. guys. I'm so pumped. I bought it today. I haven't started it yet though. I have to finish one Metroidvania before starting the next one, or else I'm a monster and I won't be able to do it. I can't juggle two of those games. I can't juggle a Metroidvania with any other game. Really? <clears throat> when I sink in, actually, it was one of the things I was going to talk about when we talk about our, our next show note. Um, so let's let's go ahead and do that. Do it. Let's do it. Um, so Tell we the people. we made an announcement on Twitter in the Discord, and uh, we put out a podcast on on the new feed. If you listen to the show. You don't follow us on Twitter. You don't follow the Discord. You need to know that the end of the month uh, will mark the end of the Xbox Empire solo feed as Elaine and I are moving to a new podcast format beginning September 1st um, called Place of Video Games. You can go look for it right now. Um, The link to the page you can subscribe will be in the notes. So you don't have to go search for it. You can just scroll down, click it. It'll be the first thing in the show notes for this episode. And you can go subscribe to our new show, play some video games. Again, we start September 1st. We didn't want to catch anybody off guard. We didn't want you guys to be surprised. We want to give you a couple weeks. We hope mm-hmm. you you follow and travel along with us. We've enjoyed having you as listeners and having all of you interact with us in the show. And we, we hope you enjoy what we do enough that you want to continue listening to it. Um, but we released an entire podcast on that feed. It's kind of our first episode, like episode zero, if you will, kind of a prequel. Uh, about 30 minutes of me and Devin will be joining on play some video games uh, if you don't listen to our playstation show um why we're doing this and long and uh, short of it i don't want to retell the whole thing because you can go listen to that podcast if you'd like uh, if you want all the details but long and short of it it's it's pretty selfish on my part <laughs> um i just i do too much i do too many shows i do too many podcasts uh, especially in, i do all the editing and all the show notes and all the postings and and, and, and i've been doing it for some time uh, many years at this point. It's not like a, a new thing. I've been doing this for at least two or three years in terms of three or four shows a week. And uh, I need yep. to reduce that load. And um, one of the ways that we figured out, one of the ways that I figured uh, a way to do this was to consolidate. So mm-hmm. play some video games, start September 1st with myself, Elaine, Devin from PSXP, Delvin from PSXP. That'll yep. be the weekly four. And then we will also mix and match um, hosts from uh, our PSVG alumni, um, mm-hmm. as well as our other shows. I've already reached out to Kyle and Josh. Um, the Nintendo Chat crew will definitely come through every so often as well. So um, it'll just be gaming. It'll be Empire. Yeah. Like you listen to Empire, it's going to be Empire. It's still Elaine's still the host. So it's really oh, no. not going to be that. To, it's not going to be all that different. Come. It's going to be Empire. You know. We will yeah. just also talk about PlayStation and Nintendo when we see fit. Which guess what? is we, empire we did, well i was just gonna say like <laughs> since i've been on this show this show has definitely evolved into like us talking about whatever the hell we want to talk about exactly. and then hitting xbox news and so the real the reality of the situation is elaine has to herd extra cats every week very very gr- sometimes grumpy cats that i love very much <laughs> um and uh I, elaine has to come up with a new intro because this doesn't make sense anymore welcome She's internet have to, to play that. some video games I oh like it's it. always gonna be well yeah i got it i i believe me i've been walking around my house like a crazy person all week you I should got say this. play some video games on the play some video games network of podcasts. that i can't do <laughs> that i that's the part i can't do so stay tuned for my dumb intro but <sighs> like we do this on empire anyway and i selfishly when donnie pitched this i'm like i've been wanting this show to be more broad anyway so you know it's like works out for me like i just it's not just xbox news anymore it gets to be like all of it you know and that's fun that's we can be oh boy i'm gonna get so much gray hair from these boys though it's just it's me and blast. three dudes it's gonna, it's be, a gonna lot be a fun. blast we'll yeah. let elaine come through we'll let Elaine, Haley come through we'll do it yeah we it's got gonna it. be great See, this is really a return to roots uh lane before you joined us um our very first show was the psvg podcast sure. and uh we did that show i think for two or three hundred episodes uh, before it eventually got shuttered as Kevin um, had to kind of hang it up. Um, but that show was what this show is. The, that show sure. was, we all had like our own things that we liked, but we would come together, we would record PSVG. And even after we started our, our, our separate feeds, we would still kind of come together and record PSVG every so often. So that was what it was supposed to be. And just the staff has dwindled, you know, to carry on and do other things in life. That's one of the things that let go. So I'm very excited yeah. Um, and it feels kind of like a, a return to form for us. 
For me too, though, my very first podcast, while it was called uh, 360 Arcadians, was a four-person show where we just talked about video games. And like, I haven't done that in a really long time. And yeah. I'm very excited about it. So Me too. Um, <laughs> Sean just said uh, in the chat, I need to read this because it's funny. Trying to think of a joke about the show being more broad. Just can't bring myself to calling Elaine a broad, though. Dev, she'll cut you. <laughs> Accurate. She will, will cut, cut you. you. Uh, I saw I cut you. Uh, T. Paul and 20 in the chat says it's not up on Google. I submitted it to Google, and I've seen the page. So hiding. I will double check it, but it should be there. I know the page is there because I've seen it on the back end, but I will double check it for sure. Yeah. So I'm excited. You, I hope everybody at least gives this a roll. Like, look, everybody who listens to this show probably has at least one other thing besides an Xbox. I would so, hope so. So, like, you know, you got to. A PC, uh, maybe the PlayStation, a Switch, a phone, you play games. Who knows? But you, you know, got to have gonna, at least one other thing. I was going to save this for, for, for podcasting with Sean because we were kind of touched on a little bit. Sean and I basically held our own private sweet hangs this past week. We got together. We were on the call. And we were just like, you know what? Like, just we don't have to record this. Like, let's just talk. Let's That's talk true. about this. And me and Sean just kind of hung out for about 90 minutes. And one of the things that I said was um, everybody in PSVG, I hope, and I hope our listeners know that I love my Xbox and I love Game Pass. Yeah. But I've never considered myself a part of, like, the Xbox fandom. Like, when you search Xbox podcast and you see the YouTubers and, like, Rand and Cold Eastwood – um, you know, like, I don't think I fit in with those folks, especially when I see them. And we've talked about this. We haven't gone yeah. in depth, but we have talked about this. When you see, yes. like, how they act and behave and stuff on Twitter, and, like, that's not us. It never has been us. Even even when I like to tease Dev, it's not that. It's not. It's not. It's There's no console. I told Donnie when he pitched this, I was like, I will not. I will not embroil myself in console war nonsense because it's not who I am and it's not what I want to do. Right. And that a lot of those shows do lean that way. And that's fine. People who want to listen to it will listen to that. I would like to believe that the people who listen to this network of shows are kind of here for more than one thing. Yeah, and this just saves you from having. We all to love games. The thing that the thing video games. The thing that I said on the PSVG episode zero, if you go listen to it, is you and I have everything, play everything. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like we can yeah. tease, we can make a we're joke dumb. here or there, and that's yeah. more just because we're friends. Uh, yeah. And I say we, not each other. Me and you tease Dev, it's just us versus Dev. Um, <laughs> I love Dev. Uh, but yeah, we have everything play everything. So yeah, our, our taste is a little broader than that. Um, so yeah, and if you listen to my other show, the Nintendo Shack, uh, first, thank you so much. Um, but I did announce as well that the September 2nd episode of Nintendo Shack will be my last as the permanent co-host. So I'll be stepping away from that as well. So this is a big kind of shakeup reformation for PSVG. Um, we'll still do our weekly shows. Um, it will be streamed live to patrons at our DLC level. That's something I got to work on. I don't know if I can do that with Melon or not. I think I'm going to have to do that with OBS, but that's something yeah. we're going to work on. Um, but yeah, the idea is to make it uh, live. So if you watch this live and you really like it, I would encourage you to at least go give DLC a try before you decide not to. <laughs> like, we'd love to have you yeah. live and, and hopefully, like, you know, it, will, it won't be as, uh, you know, as busy. You know, most shows would be nice if we can just talk to the patrons. I think it'd be cool if they can yeah. join us. But we will still put the video on demand up on YouTube. It'll still go out on public feed. You know, it's so like you don't you don't have to subscribe to listen to the show at all. Like it'll still be there. Um, but if you want to, um, a big part of this was also to put more effort into DLC, which we just did is we just released a uh, like two hour episode with me and Dev talking about all all kinds of stuff. Good. Elaine, we talked about I sports, have to to that. NBA, college oh. football. We talked about OnlyFans. We talked about Netflix documentary like it went places. Oh, boy. <laughs> You know what? I shouldn't be surprised. I don't know why I'm surprised. I really don't understand why I'm surprised. I'm glad that we aired this out and got it, you know, out to the people now, though. And you guys have some couple weeks left of just me and Donnie before uh, chaos rains down from above, and I have to start muting people. You yeah. should give me the right to mute people's microphones. Yeah, we can do that. When I put the people in timeout. No, I won't do that. I love these guys. <laughs> also, all three of your names start with D, and I hate it. Elaine and the like, three there's... Ds. I, mm, this will be the new show. Now that's an OnlyFans <laughs> page. We're not doing this today. That's I'm the not new doing show it today. Name. <laughs> Sorry, Don't play some video games. <sighs> <sighs> that's fine. <laughs> Deb says yikes. Yes. <laughs> right? I love you, um, Berks. Very excited. We've got new logo. <laughs> yeah. We got new merch. Let's go. New video, new song. So it's, it's going to be exciting. exciting. I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm pumped. I am pumped. 
Yep. Video games are exciting and talking to you guys about them will be exciting. So. You know, I realized today, and this is going to be, this is a little regurgitation. So spoilers for folks who listen to Shaq. Um, I realized today with the Nindy Direct, like, because I'm not going to be doing all the shows, I think it's going to like strongly affect my buying behavior. Because I started lining up the dates that all these indie games are coming out on. And I was like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to play this one or this one or this one. Because there's like other games coming out that week. So they're I'm all curious. like just going on the wish list like in the backlog. Yes. It's like maybe I'm, one day. But not I'm today. curious to see how you handle it. it. It's also good. You don't have to feel the pressure to play. And neither do I. To play specific games just because they're only on this one console. Sure. You know, like I love that. Are there I highlights just, I wanna, or features? I want to roll with my dumb mood. Yeah, you know no, I mean? I'm the like, same. That's what I want, and so. I and I do feel that way. I do feel compelled to yeah. cover and have an opinion on these things. I hope our listeners know that. Like, I don't, and it's easy. And I, I think a lot of listeners will be like, "You don't have to do that." It's easy to say that, but we for me to, to feel like I'm giving the show what it deserves, yes. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do I'm the, the required way. reading. I'm gonna put in my homework, so I make sure that I'm trying to make this show as best I can. I do that with everything yeah. that I do. Um, yeah, but I like one of the make... things I was thinking about today actually was Metroid. So you and Dev That's are right. all going to be Metroid, right? And Metroid comes out the exact same day as Far Cry. I think I'm going to play Far Cry first and then put Metroid kind of off a little bit. I do get the OLED. I don't know what to do with you. So I'm sure I'm going to boot it up and check out the OLED. But I can't Tetris do both. Effect, I can't juggle both. Tetris Effect comes out on Switch the, that same day. The OLED? With the OLED. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Now you know what Elaine's going to play. <laughs> For Tetris. That That's episode of PSVG is going to be like, who's playing Metroid? It's be Dev. Like no, playing I'll play Tetris. Out. No, <laughs> Metroid is actually my favorite Nintendo property. There's no way I don't play that day one. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm I'm happy about all this, and I do want to make one thing clear. Just because this show is ending does not mean that Forza Horizon Five is not my favorite game, like my most anticipated game. Oh, can you? Still I is. can't wait Still until is. you and I record a Forza Still Horizon is. Five episode with Devin just sitting there. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> We're gonna get I'm him to so play excited. it. De- See, Dev and I both love Metroid, so it's going to be good. We're going to just talk about that while you're like, but I shot Macarena discs. And we're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay, look, keep your murder alligator over there. Let us talk about Metroid. For we'll see. Minute. We'll see how that works <laughs> for you guys. We'll see. We'll see. Not if you give me the right to mute people's microphones, then you're in trouble. All right. So for for now, we're still doing Xbox News. So let's talk about the Xbox News. Sure. Because um, there's actually a decent amount of it. Yeah. So apparently cloud streaming arrives on PC via the Xbox app, but it's like insiders, uh, uh, Xbox and Windows insiders yeah. only right now, I yeah. think. But that's exciting. That's exciting. Sure. Is it? I don't know. I don't give a shit. It's like, like a big deal. Truth, like I don't it, care. When it came out, everybody was talking about it. So I guess it is. I I'm, I mean, it's like once it hit the browser, it's like I'm over yes. it. You know, it's that's on the that's where it was for me. Like the browser was the bigger deal to me yeah. than this app. Remind? The apps are all too many apps. Ping me when it hits Still. Switch. That's when I'll don't care say, next. Don't say ping me. What are you, a corporate tag overlord? me? Right at me. At me. <laughs> at me. That's when better. It hits that Switch. makes us millennials. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> no wait, that's not better. Um. All right. So we did. We also saw this news today. A, a quick hit. Life is strange. The remastered collection is being delayed from September 10 to early 2022 and they released a statement on Twitter and it was like look we're working on true colors there's going to be DLC for that very soon after so we're pushing this to give the team space and it's like yep. that's fine you know that's I get it you know I get it it's a bummer I bought the the collection where you get you all the bundle it once yeah so I'm not going to get the... I'm not going to get it all day 1 but don't you wait. still get a discount on the bundle I don't know I don't know I don't think so I think I paid whatever the price it was I never get upset, and I might be in the minority, I never get super upset about like a, a remaster or a re-release getting delayed because it's like I've already played these ones. Sure. and You know, generally, so it's like I can wait a little bit more time. To you back know? you up there, the footage that they've shown of these remasters, not all that impressive. I, I, I don't think you're going to get... The average person would have a really hard time telling the difference. I played it on PC. I might not even be able to at all. Yeah. Like it's it's possible I'm just not going to be able to. And that's, When you side-by-side side them, like it's like... It's also not the... It's also not the kind of game that I feel really needs it from an artistic standpoint. Like, it still stands up to me. All right. It I definitely think it stands up. up. It could be more vibrant. Yeah. I think sure. a big part of it is, like, their animations, like, facial expressions. Like, that could go a long way, especially the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you know, the first one did not age Kind of robotic. Well. You know? Yeah. So they could go a long way. I was really 
excited for like just a really vibrant, crisp, clean, maybe like a maybe some bloom lighting. I'm thinking of like sure before the storm, like a lot of those outside scenes and stuff like that. Be really, really great because you know they got all like those God Ray sunshine scenes and stuff that are all set. Like they can yeah. really make them pop. But just the footage we saw early, you know, it wasn't groundbreaking. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't suggest anybody like feel compelled to run out and get the remaster. Like if you want to play those games, you play them now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, and they'd still be good. They'd still be good. Right. It's, it'd still it'll be, be good. just fine. Well, I mean, also if you want to wait, it's okay to wait. Like it's yeah. not going to impact if you want to play True Colors first. Like nope. there are always like little hints and tie-ins, but it's nothing that needs to be done before you loop back into those worlds. Like it's always just like Easter eggy type stuff with those games. So, tell me what's up with uh, Hellblade. Yeah, so Hellblade Sinuous so Sacrifice got a next-gen patch this week. It brings ray tracing, 4K, 120 hertz support with improved particle effects and a chapter select screen, which is nice. That's really, really oh, great. Um, oh, baby. Ray tracing is available on both consoles, Series X and Series S. Series X has ray tracing mode at 4K 30. There's a performance mode at 1080p 120. And mm. then there is a uh, blend at 4K 60 with some effects, but no ray tracing, which is That's probably kind of the, the mode that you want to be in. Yeah. That's my sweet spot usually. That's the my sweet ray spot. tracing. All right, I've been on my sandbox about ray tracing before. I've agreed with you. Many there times. is a very great, uh, like all you just go to YouTube and type ray tracing comparison Hellblade. Yes, it's almost unnoticeable like it's extremely hard to even tell because the lighting from the first game was because the game is so scripted the lighting was so good like you can really only tell on the quality of reflections in the water water it's always water before the reflection on the water was kind of like a like a shape like a shadow kind of smudgy now it looks like a true reflection Mm-hmm. It's not something most people even notice. I wouldn't give up 30 frames for ray tracing at all. I agree with you. I would probably turn it on to look at it and then turn it back off. Yeah. That's what I usually do for stuff like that. But I often find that I the trade-off for me is not worth it. Um, no. Sometimes it goes too far even and makes it like almost too glossy where every yeah. reflection is too much. And I think Watch Dogs did that a little bit. Um, but I want the fr- I want 60 frames at the a The comparison video is it. hilarious because there's like yeah. YouTube None. comments are just you yeah. know people spoofing the office and stuff like there's 10 differences between these two pictures these like, are the same picture <laughs> because <the same> <laughs> like, it's, yeah. like it's, yeah. it's really really hard to tell the difference we, on... we've discussed this like developers yeah. when given the right tools and the right circumstances are super good at faking it you yeah. know and not relying on an actual algorithm to do it the right that way that costs a lot will. of performance and i'm just not willing to give up 30 frames for it no nope. no i want to play that game at 60 frames let's do that on series s mm-hmm. now I put 1080p. I'd like it to be noted that the official release says full HD, which which you could, assume is 1080p. Could mean 720 or 900, right? Like it could. I believe you're correct. It's yeah. weird. So well, let's say one, one 1080. We're let's giving them, we might be giving them a little credit here, but 1080p <laughs> 30 on Series S or 1440/30 for a for, for a, a quality mode, or you can run at 1080p 60 with no ray tracing. Yeah, so te- this leads me to believe that it's not 1080p 30 with ray tracing on. It leads me to believe it's 900. Yeah, we'll see. Because they, would, they wouldn't be the same. They specifically be wrote me... full HD, which makes me think it's not 1080 either. Probably 900. It's probably like... Don't worry. It's probably Someone, dynamic 1080. Probably Someone like will take it apart. Probably 900 to 1080, but... It's probably 900. You know, it, but... I'm impressed. You're still Look, you're still getting a Series S game that gives you a 60 frame option mm-hmm. as well as a, a ray tracing option. That is compelling for $299. It's pretty sweet. It's, the, it's more compelling because it's the size of a little box, Bible. man. It, it it's punches up. It's the size of like a big Bible. It's, it tries hard. It's weird. It does. It really works so hard. The little it's try so hard. It's so cute. It's just like me. It's adorable and it works so I think so I can. Hard. I think I can. I think I can. You do it, it Series S. It be. Uh, I'm not beefy enough to call myself a Series no. X. So, you know. All right. That's okay. Um, Going into kind of the next couple of weeks here, um, Microsoft Xbox has come out and sort of kind of reiterated their Gamescom schedule, if you will. The 24th is going to be a live stream ho- hosted by Paris Lilly uh, and Kate Yeager. Did I pronounce that? Is it Yeager? Yeager, probably. Yeager. Yep. Uh, so you're going to get, um, you know, updates on titles, third party stuff, like the standard issue, what's coming out this holiday, Game Pass updates. That's your standard, you know. Xbox usually Dream. 
I mean, Xbox is a big supporter of Gamescom. They have been, yeah. I think, during Phil Spencer's entire tenure. So I would expect something notable. Mm-hmm. It might be, I if I had to guess, maybe they announce a trailer about Halo's story or they do some sort of public beta for the multiplayer or yeah. a different mode for the multiplayer. Like, it's I would time. imagine <laughs> that, yeah, they'll use that as an opportunity to get the marketing campaign really kicked off for Halo, I would guess. Did they, did they give a date? They, they might date, date it that day. They might date they it at Gamescom. It. That, that's they probably a good to... bet. We're, we're there. It's It'll probably soon. be the 24th, probably be after we hear about Call of Duty, right? There are rumors that's going to be later this week? Early there are week. rumors that's like the 19th? Yeah, maybe? I think that is the I, um, date. I think that's the date that that's the rumor, and that makes sense. I can see them dating Halo at this. They need to. There's they no other opportunity could. to date it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, a big opportunity. Probably uh, like a, 20th... a campaign trailer and a date. Yeah, I at the very least they need to do a date. It's sweet. time to commit. It's time to commit. Um, the twenty fifth will be Gamescom opening night live, and then the twenty sixth is Bethesda's sort of big stream. Do you expect anything from Bethesda? I don't know that I do with this. No, it's too soon I after E three to me. You know, I, I don't. don't. Probably a lot of reiterations and probably show the latest in Fallout seventy six and DLC. What about Death Loop? Like do we get do we get a last Death Loop trailer before it's out in a so. couple of weeks? Maybe. Yeah, it's out weeks after this yeah but like have they done death loop promotion outside of playstation like all of the promotion for death loop has been partnered with playstation has bethesda been like doing their own thing that's i don't know but i think so is playstation doing something at gamescom i mean you're right they could be doing it with the bethesda show i mean they could be doing the same time it's it's coming out and they do need to yeah this is a completely different day this is not an xbox thing so like you don't have to like you know pencil them into beholden to those that's ties. why i'm thinking i think because it's bethesda i think they actually need to probably show death loop like, i'm sure it's, it's probably time a good for bet. them it's coming out the yeah, next month bet. they have to it's a good bet. um so that's i mean do you think we'll see ghostwire tokyo at all that's also Maybe. on the table i mean i don't know what they plan they to delay it to like, what next year yeah i don't think you can Maybe go not. into this thing and just show the same crap you've been showing you got to show something i think they can though. it's a Totally well, I guess we'll see. You know, because it's not like a big event. It's like a stream. You know, like they'll show <laughs> I know. some stuff. Excuse me. God, that got on top of me. Um, I guess we'll see, but I'm excited about this. I like more. Talk about that, that Doom DLC mode that's coming, the Horde mode. Yes. I want to play the hell out of that. They that's could do that so for fun. sure. Probably. That's going to be super fun. Yeah. What do you think about, Any- are you excited for opening night live? What is that? That's a that Jeff Keighley it? thing where he stands there and talks by himself. No. Yeah. No, I'm not. I find him boring by himself. I'm sorry. Don't kind of. send me mean messages. I just he always has good stuff. I just think he's just oh, he a gets the best. Presenter. He gets the best content. I I would love to somebody needs to interview him. He's always interviewing everybody else. I'd mm-hmm. love to interview him. Like, dude, how are you doing this? He just He's a magic He's man. just he everybody's friend. Like people uh, yeah. just like him. You know? Well, like, but he's uh, and it's true, and he's great with interviews, but he's just a boring solo presenter to me. So it's hard for me to get excited like to listen to him. He comes the man off talk. like really a, a prepared. Robot. Yeah. A robot. He's you know, robotic. Like he does these, like, he'll like do a little joke and a zinger, and it's like, are you reading from a card? You know, you know the androids <laughs> in the alien universe? He's one of them. Like, I'm just mm. uncomfortable around him all the time, and I don't know why. I always feel so, so cynical when he does his shows because I watch them and I'm like, I don't like this. But I see everybody robotic. excited, having fun, so like, I don't want to be that guy but i think he he's great and he gets great information and he has great connections he has friends everywhere it's just that his delivery makes me feel like he's a robot and i should be afraid hmm. that's that's all that's all that it is and it's not like you know it's just it's just a yard wants us to know will they launch halo before or after call of duty i think they'll wait halo is going to be a november launch yeah if they halo were going to launch gonna be... halo before call of duty i think we'd know it by now halo yeah no what Halo is going to be as close to the anniversary of Halo as it's going to get. Halo's no. That's yeah. Nathan's been calling that all year since they. De- uh, since, there's no way it's since not the true. delay. I believe yes. Nathan said that day it'll be on whatever November day is. That's like the anniversary, right? So it'll be that. They made day. a big deal about Halo Three on that date. It'll yeah. be the same date uh, or as close to it as possible within like a Tuesday or a Friday or whenever yeah. they launch. It makes it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that that's November. All right, let's. We would be remiss if we didn't discuss Game Pass. Of course. Let's quickly discuss some Game Pass. So, Codemasters games have been dropped onto Game Pass via EA Play. This is exciting because there's good stuff in here. Um, Dirt 4, Dirt Rally, Dirt Rally 2.0, F1 2020 is good. It's just hard. Super (laughs) hard. We're just bad at. I'm going to download it and try it again. 
I think you should because I really like it. Because the last hard. one was the one that was on there that I tried was 19, right? Yeah, but they haven't changed the mechanics. Oh, damn it. I was, <laughs> Come on, dude. There was, when I saw it, I was like, maybe, maybe it's gotten. Do you know there's an F1 game on my 3DS? What? I played F1 on my 3DS and it's it's fun. It's easier. It's like a kart racer. And of I'm course like, it is. This it's is a kart great. Racing. But it's not a kart racer. It looks, here's the thing. It looks realistic and everything. Like I'm on the streets of Monaco in 3DS. Yeah, but it's it just, not simulating. It plays like a kart racer. Like yeah, because I could can. turn all the assists on and then like just wreck people out of the way and play. Like that's oh, really all I want. Like, that's really funny. They that's made funny. a kart I mean, racer yes. on PC. It's like F1 Superstars or whatever. Yes, yes, I yes, want yes, that. Yes, yes. I need a new one of those is what you I want. You want a new one of those. Um, Grid and Library of Arena are also in here. Uh, I like Codemasters racing games a lot. I think Dirt is fun. Dirt was fun. So, yeah, I enjoyed the little bit of Dirt that I played. Um, I've never played Grid. I mean, this, to be honest with you, none of these are doing a whole lot for me. I'm not, I think that for people who are racing fans, sure. this is a pretty big deal because you oh, get yeah. a lot of, and Dirt 4 was one of the, and Dirt Rally are two of the better ones. Um, Dirt 5, for a lot of people, fell very flat. Think so. about it. You get all these, all these racing games plus Forza. I just get excited about Forza Horizon. Yeah, that's Please it. be that's excited. All you, that's all we Please need. be excited. All right, tell me what's going on with Techland. Yeah, yeah, what, I will. What is, let's tell me things about this. Techland did an interview with a website called MP First, and they gave us some insight on what Dying Light 2 will bring. They actually talked on this back in March, which I knew about, but um, anyway, let's get into it. There's a quality mode and a performance mode. The quality mode will be 4K, have volumetric lighting and post processing effects, and ray tracing. The performance mode focuses on high frame rate. It'll be 60 FPS or more if you have VRR. So it will support variable refresh rates on Xbox and compatible TVs. Now, mm-hmm. this has led this interview led a lot of people to be concerned because they're like, wait a minute, I want 4K and 60. And they didn't mention it in this interview. However, if you look it up on WWF CC Tech or whatever that website is, everybody knows. Um, I can never remember the actual name, right? Because that's weird. It's abbreviation a yeah mm-hmm. um they said back in march that there was a quality mode or performance mode and then a 4k mode he specifically said yeah we're focused on a quality mode performance mode and a 4k mode so i believe there is a 4k 60 mode it won't have ray tracing there's two ways to look at this your way or it could have changed. or they left it out on purpose and it changed it could have changed now if we want to be cynical because it's Techland. I would say it's changed. Look, I just but hope the game runs longer than the, an hour. You and I need to discuss how we just hope this thing isn't a it's steaming like a, dumpster fire. It's like fire. a crank I don't, car. I'm just like <laughs> it is. It's like it's it's like you know those soapbox cars that kids kids you have to race downhill because they don't really have. It's just like once the hill do is like over, the, you're done. The twenty four clock, like the moment you start the game, like a clock goes. <laughs> <"Dee-dee."> <laughs> Up there, you have so much time you have before your console reboots, and we send the robots to you. Jeff Keighley's coming fire. to your house to murder you. It's terrifying. I I just want the game to be good. I don't actually care if there is a four K sixty or not. Just I do. I care because I I want to play at sixty. I will. I would give. I, want to play I would. At 60. I would forego whatever I have to to play at sixty. That game Agree. is meant to be played fast. That's why I worry about the Switch release. That sounds like a nightmare. That's, That's why I'm best. enamored and haven't stopped putting it down and playing on my PC because I'm running it you get at frames. like 130 frames a second. I've, it's amazing. Nev and I have been trying to tell you this for so long. I've, I've <laughs> been. Just, this isn't new. I've been on the frames bandwagon. You guys God. won me over. I bought a it's whole the new PC. TV no, it's more the PC thing. Sometimes you have to go there. To oh, it's so one. damn good on the PC. I know. It's so I good. Know. Old games, you got to throw new horsepower at, and on PC, you can do that better. It is weird, though, because on my console and my TV combined do way more than what my laptop is capable of for most games. Dying Light is like a standout that is three times as good on my little laptop than it is on my console. (laughs) They were a PC developer. Yeah, they they are. They're they're PC lean, yeah. I even considered getting it for pc instead of xbox now a new game i don't know That's, i'd let the console deal with the problem well i now but but I, I know on even as much as i enjoy playing 1080p on my little laptop i know that i want to but i want to play in 4k i want to play it on my Absolutely. tv right? like that's going to be more comfortable i think the series x will give you what you want better than that laptop will yeah, if you had I a beefy too. desktop pc i would say buy it hook it up to your tv i mean the fact that they're supporting but... vrr you know, it was it's like a big a, deal. It's a big deal for them because, again, this is a developer who's released 18,000 DLC packs and is yet to up or patch their damn game. 
Because it's probably too broken for them to do it. Well, I bet you there's something stupid time to frame rate. I bet you they just can't do it. Well, and I'm, just... I'm glad that hopefully on this one they have it fixed and we can play the game as it was meant to be. Don't speak it out loud. Because it's a great game. Survive. It's an amazing it, game. Best it's zombie game. Hurt. It's so yeah, it's damn good. It's a very good, good zombie game. It's a very oh, good zombie game. So damn it, good. Of the serious zombie games. Walking Dead the game. Like it's that's, very serious, Everybody yes. said they wanted that forever, right? It's Saints and Sinners it was like wanted real oh, zombie game. Bad. Dying Light is a great zombie game. Among the best of I think it's the best serious one. I think Dead Rising probably is my favorite goofy zombie game. There yeah. are differences for me. Like oh, I need something different. different. Yeah. But the parkour and the way the movement works in Dying Light as a series requires frames. So I'd give up a lot to get. And I love frames. the airdrop mechanic. Like, yeah. like just like or I, I guess it's not a mechanic like the system. Like they've got all this stuff that's going on for an open world game that was built in 2014. Like it's right. It's pretty amazing. Right. It's kind of ahead of its day. And they just never fixed it. But you know, that's like fine. They far so... cried before Far Cry. Like kind in of. terms of you know five really hit big. You know like kind of. if you compare it to like what Primal was doing or four, oh, they right. crushed it. Like they were so much better than those in my opinion. Uh, although Far Cry Four runs better by leaps and bounds. Yeah, but it also is like 800p. <laughs> <laughs> on PC, I disagree, but sure. you know, like it's you know, but sure. yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I'm, I want to be excited for this video game. I'm afraid to be. I am. I want to be. Did you get the stupid want... edition? Yeah, of course I did. I'm an so idiot, we got it together. Like so you. You, you're yeah. afraid of the game, and you still oh, got the stupid edition. I'm trying. Oh yeah, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Come on, we've established how stupid. Well, look, both if it's broken and terrible, we'll still have a cool light. That's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember it by. I bought stupid editions for bad games plenty of times. I have a life. spot. I'm I'm completely full. Oh, All my cubbies. Spot? I have one I know. spot at the top. Just my top of over, over my Xbox. For your stupidest I'm item. I'm gonna put half. <laughs> half of it's gonna go to my KO edition for Scott Pilgrim, and the other half oh, is right. my Dying Light statue, and that's it. It's done. Yeah, and so you'll stop buying dumb things. The canvas right? is done. You're not gonna stop. I'm gonna need dumb another bookshelf. You're gonna need more. <laughs> stupid we're such idiots we're such children my basement is an ode to 15 year old boys like it's their consoles ridiculous. that are less than that stupid edition is. i was so upset when they announced the price my that husband one's... found out i am my husband found out i imported a lighter from japan that cost more money than it should have so let's not talk about it the sting let's on that talk. one yeah that was this it's spicy all right, we got a couple more things to hit here. Uh, talk to me about the Xbox Indie Showcase because I actually didn't get a chance to fully parse through all of it. So I didn't watch it because I the last time, time I stayed up to watch this, they showed me Stalker two teeth after three yeah. hours, and I was like, "This is the last time Xbox." You were very, you were big mad last time. Yeah, um, um, but they did do the ID at Xbox show, and mm -hmm. they did show off a bunch of games. I'm not going to read them all. I no, did write a lot. notes of the ones that I did want to talk about. Um, but of the ones that are here, I do want to shout out Aeon Drive um, mm -hmm. because okay. it has a demo that's up. And yep. I sent this to Jason, uh, hey Fluxe, because I think it's down his alley. And Dev might want to look this one up too. I'm always yep. afraid of sending stuff to Dev because I think he's just going to be like, nah, nah, son. Um, but he should give it a look. It's got the like the messenger vibes, like that Devolver kind of yeah. Katana yep. Zero type of thing. But of the ones that they showed, and they showed many. They showed a lot. Couple dozen. I'm gonna shout out Lightyear Frontier. Definitely not mm -hmm. my game, but it looks so damn good that I'm probably gonna try it. Yep. It, it yep. looks great. It's an open world farming game, which I have no interest in at all. But it's beautiful. <laughs> it looks so yeah, good. Yeah, it's pretty. Like, it is pretty. I kind of want to farm stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next one that I'm very excited about is Ali Ali World, which was yes. announced in Nintendo Indie World um, like, well, six months ago, and even was it in today's? Do they talk about no, all the other world? Okay. It wasn't in today. I put a whole list together today. I was, um, I was paying attention. Was they focused. went into depth over character customization. You can come, you know, you can do all the things. You can change your mustache yep. and your hat and your shirt and your board and all that, uh, and your own animations. I saw a really cool overworld map, one twenty, four K. Yo, for all the other world, which is not like surprising. Like it's that. indie games no, cartoon, it, but it's still awesome. I love yeah, all the other world. Anytime something comes up that I can do that with, I get excited because I'm just like, ooh, something my Man, TV can Ollie do. Ollie Ollie on 3DS was, I got That's into that game. game, yeah. And so I'm, I'm all excited for this one. And the 124K probably means I'm going to get it on Xbox. Yeah, I'm always, uh, but I wonder if it'll drop in a Game Pass. They didn't announce it and they said it's coming. They announced Smart Delivery, so I'm assuming it's not. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. Okay. Because okay. I don't think they would announce Smart Delivery 
in not game yes you're right yeah this. that's valid is there anything else on this ma- masterful list here this big ass list that you <sighs> care to they showed the Orful escape again man and i'm really excited about that freaking video game. it has a brand new trailer and in the middle of the trailer they go you're gonna do crazy things like talk to giant floating asymmetrical space head sure, sure. i'm in which is I the don't coolest care. thing ever and it's then, yeah. so weird i'm so in for weird i'm so excited about weird there was an indie game called Inked, which yes. has this hand-drawn, um, kind of like Gunman Clive style, like that pencil drawing where you can kind of see the artist. It looks like the artist almost drawing it in real time. You can mm-hmm. see the etchings, um, yep. very black, white, but there's colors and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's a simple puzzle, or I say simple. It looks like the standard puzzling affair. You've got a character, mm-hmm. you stand on some things, you activate some switches, you move some things around, block puzzles, stuff like that. Like So gameplay-wise, there's not, not something we've never seen before, but we've right. never seen it in that style, and the style yes. stands yes. out. So that one's kind of, that one's probably on my wish list. That's going to be, I'm going to keep my eyes out for that one. And then they had like a scissor reel where I, I marked that Sable and uh, She Dreams Elsewhere is there again. I'm not interested yep. in She Dreams Elsewhere. I just keep bringing it up because I think it's definitely Rebecca game. Like it's got uh, all the Undertale vibes. It's It speaks to me too. I've had it on my Steam wish list since it was quietly announced and it's been like circulated amongst certain streamers. So I, I'm excited. I'm excited about Sable. I will also note Stardew Valley is coming to Game Pass. Yeah. It might already be out on Game Pass. It's out in Game Pass soon. And that has a lot of co-op stuff in it now. So if you got friends with the Game Pass, you could farm forever. I think it's cool. It's a great Game Pass game. Very smart move. Yep. So I don't know. I like these little indie things. They make me happy. This is the reason they why I I love Game Pass. Um, there's a part of me, it's weird because I often think when we, they do these showcases that there's not enough Game Pass talk. Sure. But at the same time, they have to promote things that aren't in Game Pass. Aren't too. on Game Pass. Yes. And I don't yes. know the best way to balance that i feel like they should do them separately they should do game pass um, id and xbox presentations and then just id and xbox stuff that's not game pass i would be happy enough if they just split the, the presentation into two halves show me everything that's not on game yeah, pass we talked and show about me all this the before. stuff coming on like group it it feels better <laughs> when it's grouped to me i just think maybe that's just my type a personality wanting that twitter told but, me there was a hundred thousand people watching on twitch which i don't know if that's, that's a lot or a little I don't either. I, I feel have like no that's a little, but they were like going crazy. They're like, there's a hundred thousand people watching this. I was like, is that a lot though? I don't know. It's not Nintendo numbers. We're trying but, to 50 you know. million people. hundred thousand's right. right. kind of a drop in the bucket, but. But I mean, I, like I said, if they could do it in one, cause I don't think they ever have enough to split it into two separate ones, but like just put all the game pass stuff, even up front, put it first. If that's I ultimately, your focus, you know? and I think we talked about this last time. So again, we might be regurgitating ourselves here, but oh, we do this constantly. seeing that we're not going to be, Seeing that we only have so many more episodes left where we just focus solely on Xbox. Xbox, yeah. Nintendo does such a better job of uh-huh. cultivating a group of indies that you'll care about. Uh, and it's not to say that I don't care about these. Again, I read off a couple. But this is a couple out of like 30. I took like I watched, three. I watched every trailer. And I took yeah. four games out of the 35 that they showed. I watched a Nintendo Indies event today that was maybe a half an hour that had, I think, 18 or 19 games, and I was excited about two-thirds of them. Hmm. Yes. Nintendo groups them better, too. They find, like, a vibe for their shows that makes it feel exciting. They're just yeah. better at it. They're well, every time they it, do you know? one, they always have a big hitter. You know, or at least they always one. have an Axiom Verge or a Golf Story or a Hollow Knight. Like, they at always have a thing today, yeah. that yeah. kind of that kind of push it. Kind of, everything kind of swirls around that. Or I feel like a, that. I feel like that big one is missing for Xbox a lot. They also don't do enough of the available today. That is something Nintendo did today with five or six games. Yeah, that yeah. is very impactful because it's like, well, I'm going to pick up my Switch. Oh, now I'm on the store. Oh, what else do and I? And it's want? weird because I don't necessarily think it's Xbox not doing their job. I think they do. Um, no, they do. Well, I think I think the challenge is the make the thing that's different is that they get those exciting announcements, but they're a part of Game Pass announcements and not ID at Xbox right. shows. Like they right. have the big announcement and it's out today, indie game. And we're like, that's awesome. It's awesome. Yes. But it usually comes in the Game Pass update for the month or an E3 right. showcase. It's not, it's like the, it's like the ID at Xbox division. Like when they're doing these promotions, these marketing, it's like they don't have a whole lot to stand on. It, Be- it fe- yeah, it feels like they're redheaded stepchild of shows. They don't quite know what to do. It's it. like, it's like it, the big announcements, like the big Game Pass, like steals kind of some of their thunder. 
Exactly. And it's like exactly. they kind of need some of that thunder. They need to hold one that is launching today, but not into Game Pass almost. They almost mm. need something good like that. But the problem is everything that you really want from Xbox out of indies it hits Game Pass, the exciting yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, you know, it's tough. Maybe these idea at Xbox showcases aren't the right way to handle it. Maybe they should be handled more like Nintendo does theirs, like ti- like in timing, you know? But I don't I know what the th- right solution is. It showcases yeah. a challenge that comes with Game Pass, where as great as Game Pass is, like you do run into these issues where it's like, well, I, how do you talk, when you talk about things that aren't Game Pass, is it still, does it have weight? Are your fans interested? Because I I'm not as interested. Like when it's not coming to Game Pass, I'm just open. Like I'm not as interested. I'm same, same. But also, I'm invested in Game Pass at this point, and that's where I want. When I go to indies on Xbox, that's where I want them to go. Yeah, same. You know what I mean? Like that, I want them there. That's so why I'm excited. Like, why Dude, isn't it there? Twelve minutes yeah. and Sable and all that stuff, and you know, like yeah. no offense to, you know, Aeon Drive or Soup Pot or Planet. I, I, I want to play Soup Pot, but like it's just one of those things where it's like maybe this I would pick up on Switch then because it's not on Game Pass, and maybe I want to play it when I'm on the go as an indie, that's the, the place where it falls down for me personally. So, all right. So a quick note about game pass. We got a couple of games coming to it. So it seems like a good time to drop that in. Aragami two, September 17th. Paparazzi is soon. Do you Evil see that genius. Game? Yeah. 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 Why not? I think some people are going to be Let's really it. into yeah, that it one. It's a cute little. It's pup, adorable. Puppy Pokemon snap thing. It's adorable. How yeah. could you not want to take pictures? Well, take pictures of Pokemon Snap with puppies. Um, <laughs> Evil Genius 2 is supposed to be this year. Stardew Valley coming soon, hopefully soon. And then Boyfriend Dungeon launched into Game Pass today, a game that I've had on my Steam wish list since it was originally shown at a PAX for me. It's goofy yeah. and weird, and I'm Boyfriend Dungeon it. looks d- dope. It, it looks great. Ad- Here's dope. my issue. You, sh- you should. I should have maybe asked you to come to Shack. My issue with Boyfriend Dungeon and Eastward and mm-hmm. Axiom is that Mm -hmm. there are other, like, I want to play the Valhalla DLC instead. And then when Eastward comes out, I want to play True Colors and WarioWare instead. Like, I started lining up all these games. I'm like, I'm not going to get any of these. So it's like, that showcase, not again, spoil this for Shaq, that showcase didn't do a lot for me. Like, I mean, the games are fine. The content was good. It's the timing for you. It's just, it's like, I usually always judge these things by how many games they're going to buy. And from none. (laughs) That's interesting. Because I, I, um, I'm... Maybe weird. This maybe puts me outside. I will prioritize indies I'm super interested in over a major release. Okay. Meaning, I will buy both, but I will play the indie first. So mm. if Far Cry was out the same day as Eastward, I would play Eastward first. That's just the way that I'm... That, I'm not saying that's true. That's just the sure. way I'm wired. Um, there are a few exceptions to that with very large blockbuster games, and it's more like... I. This will be here. Especially Ubi titles where I can get them cheaper yeah, <laughs> if I wait. Point. You know? But something like Boyfriend Dungeon being essentially out today, like this is a good time good. to check something like that out. And it, it looks rad. Um, so I might install that ASAP. I'm interested in hearing some reviews because it I really looks fun. It looks good. I saw it very early at a PAX and was just enraptured by it. So I'm Thanks. very excited. All right. Are we ready to do some questions? Yeah. We don't do have it. very many more weeks, just us for questions. So we may as well do it. What you got? Donnie, what you thinking? Drew asks with Bethesda, with, with Bethesda now in in i think probably meant tow with bethesda yes. now in tow for xbox do you think they might alter xbox's plan for vr they did a few vr titles for playstation it's a good question Interesting um question. It, you know i think the better question is with xbox now owning bethesda do they still allow them to support vr it's not necessarily um, do they change xbox's plan i guess they're kind of one in the same because I could see Xbox allowing Bethesda to release a VR game on Valve or Oculus or PC. I was PC just going to say, they could just do it on PC yeah, and I, not do PSVR. I don't and think... that's the solution to the problem. They could even do PSVR. Sure. I mean, they, they, are, but, pop, they are doing Deathloop. And I know we don't expect that to continue, but I mean, could it? Yeah, it could. I don't actually think it will because I don't think they see the money-making potential in VR for the long term. I agree. That's with just you. a me thing. I think that the, the VR almost is better served as crafting like smaller, very specific experiences, and the, something like the Oculus Quest is where you want to put your VR. Potential. How their VR things perform because they did like Doom, Wolfenstein. They, they did a Doom, a Wolf, and they did a Skyrim. I don't. They do know. Fallout. No. Okay. No, uh, unless there's an unofficial patch or a way to do it, I don't believe they directly did Fallout. Now yeah. I could be wrong. I don't. So I played Skyrim VR on my PSVR. And it was not fun. I 
I think that if you're going to do VR, it kind of has to be a PC. Yeah. Like, a, a, Or the Oculus Quest in those very specific experiences like Beat Saber and stuff like that. So. If I had to bet, I'd bet that all VR projects in Bethesda have been shut down. I would also bet that Microsoft does not roll the dice on VR. They yeah, just I don't. don't. Think they, I don't uh, think they see enough potential to even touch it. They're I don't smart think they have enough any to know better. Yep. I think Xbox is firmly interested in making console and PC video games, and that's it. A hundred percent, and they're yeah. doing a great job. Their their weird, crazy investment in the last couple of years has been Game Pass. Game Pass. That's they where they've Bethesda invested in. Games. That's where they've invested their money, not in VR. They made a choice. It it's paid off largely for them. Um, yeah, okay, you're right. They, they have yeah. been. I would give them credit. Like. He took a lot of hit when PSVR was coming out and was early release, and he probably will again next year when they release the second iteration. But Phil's actually stood firm to that. He's like, we just don't. Not what we want to do. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. fit the vision. And the vision is a service, or because it's a Microsoft. We've talked about this to death, and I'll say it one more time while I have a couple more weeks of the show. They are a services company, Office 365 windows mm-hmm. they are a services company this is a service it fits in the broader company vision and it was an, probably an easier thing for him to sell in microsoft as a whole and justify so but like let's make a headset for this console that we do not hold market share in no they're not gonna do it i'll watch them announce a headset then i will eat my that'd be hilarious lunch on camera they partner with facebook hat. it's an oculus thing you can plug it into your set, Xbox. Set it all on fire. Speaking right. of Skynet. Right. Set it all on fire. We're done here. Yep. All right. I'm going to pull Rude Days 93's question. Yay or nay on Forza Horizons? Forza Horizon 5's map increase 50% larger than Forza Horizon 4. Yay. And when and when is a, a open world game too big in your opinion, if ever? It's um, only big too big if there's not enough stuff to fill it. Or if there's so much stuff to do that it ruins the experience of moving through the world. There is a such thing as too dense. And I think there are games that do that. I think the Assassin's Creed games are right on the border. Of oh that. man, I love it's Valhalla. so much. And actually, I, I do too. Valhalla could I use do. a little bit more stuff out there. It's that's I don't a think it's map. too dense. I actually think uh, Assassin's Creed. It's a little Creed, sparse. <laughs> I think Odyssey was too dense. The Greek yeah, one. there was too much in one area. Like you would constantly have people yelling those um those generated quests. Yeah, it was too much. It was too much. Yeah. I'm yay on Forza Horizon 5's map increase. Give me more places to Yeah, I'm not worried about it at all because unlike Forza Horizon 4 and 3, you know, they detailed all those different biomes and stuff that we have. And, like, if you're going to do all that, I think you need to make the map bigger or it's not going to feel natural. Agreed. If it was the same size, it'd feel all super small and stuff. You'd be in and out of different (laughs) habitation because, you know, they've got to have, like, some sort of overlap and a transition as you leave. You can't just have it cut off at the line. So, I mean, this makes a ton of sense to me, and I am just... All for all the Forza Horizon like time. If anything, you know what you're telling me? More boards to break, more ramps to find, less yeah, races exactly. to do. So well, this is enough. even better for me. I uh, That picture that they tweeted of the map, I was like, let's go. Like, I'm, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I always joke about it, but I mean, it's true. I am that player that only does the races that I have to. I do the event races. So I just do the boards. I smash the signs. I do the boards mm-hmm. and I find all the, the hidden cars nice. and I do all the ramps. So, like, in mm-hmm. Forza Horizon 4, I did that pretty quickly, 20, 30 hours, yeah. and then I was out. I'm done. That's fair. You know, like, That's oh, fair. you go do this drift zone? No, I don't. I don't like the drift <laughs> stuff, but I like, I love the longer races that only go in one direction across the map, and you end yeah, up in those a completely are cool. different place. I love that stuff. I, I love, do, like, I do races every now and again. I just don't race. Like, I don't sit there I, and just race. No, I don't just race either, but I do like a good portion of the events. I'll races. usually do, yeah. like, one or two races per play session. I'll go, I'll hit all these wow. boards, get used to it, and then I'll, like, go find a race. I'll do it before I leave. But, like, the I event like, races with the trains and the Halo so vehicles, stupid. like, those. I love it so much. I do so dumb. all of those, for sure. Like, those are easy. I like I like doing a bunch of different races because it gives me a reason to buy different cars, too, and to poke into the different Yeah, I don't even like, of, like doing that. I, I, I love that. Stuff, I race, I like, like three cars. I got three cars. I got, I got, a, I got a road car. I got a dirt car. <laughs> it's just... I want all the car. I want to you know have what? like the billionaires like. Bang, you know the difference car, is the difference is that I will spend two hours going through player made customizations. Skins. I knew to it. make I sure knew that it. I have Pikachu down the side of my car. Correctly. You gotta look. You gotta look lit, but yeah. you don't want to actually. And like, then what I do, but I also I just buy like the super tuned version for every car. You know, you, like pe- other people can tune it, and you can just buy yeah. their profiles. I just do mm-hmm. that. I'm like. 
I'll go in there and whatever that currency is or whatever, I'll just spend ten dollars. I'll just or whatever. I'll just yeah. tune the car super. I'm like, perfect. Let's go race now. I feel like it's this speaks to how broad this game is that it lets everybody experience. Yeah, it do you the hear me? Like super yeah. casual. <laughs> yeah, and you still really love this racing love the game. Hell that out you the should game. not game on amazing. paper enjoy. Right, exactly. You, you know, I'm not tuning game. anything. I don't. I don't care. tune. I, I auto tune. I'm not going through tires. I'm not. Uh, who cares? I don't do that. Like, get me back on like, the road faster. I love like car specific events where it's Chevy only or just Camaros. I love that stuff. It's fun. So, I do like. But, yeah, I mean, I get it. I was going to say I, like I get a little bit into the classes because mm -hmm. the class can matter a lot. And then like weight, like on the super jumps. Yeah, that's, that's about fun. the most that I'll care about the car. Fair enough. Yeah, because it's like well, I need to lose twenty pounds because I'm not going far enough. I like I like the act of getting a car for an event that's new to me and then driving it through the world and feeling how different it feels sure. from the last thing I was driving. I just I think that stuff. I'm just down to listen jam. to Pulse Radio for a couple hours. I love Pulse Radio. Like, Everybody knows who I feel here's about. here's a crazy thing to admit to for the world to hear. Sometimes I just drive around Forts Horizon and don't do shit. Yeah, that's what, what, when I just played, listen to the radio, don't do anything. Well, when I played Test Drive Unlimited for hundreds of hours, I drove through Hawaii with the techno station on in that game. It's the exact same experience, and I do that with Pulse Radio in this game because yeah, I like just, I like that music. Just jam it. Welcome, welcome like, hey, what did you accomplish today? None. Nothing. Nothing. Well, it gives you points for discovering new roads. It does. You, still you do get points for everything. Yeah. You get points. It's for like everything. an arcade game or something, like a oh, like a lottery so machine. It's just like Cruising casino. The world. It's just do 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 do. You did it. I like it. Just keep giving me the points. All right, hit me with another question, Donnie. Ooh, I have a question I want to ask you. Ooh. So instead of answering one of these, let's, I'm going to pull my own question because I just All thought right. of it. So we did Hot Wheels and we did Lego. What do you think we're going to do next? What's the crazy thing you want to see? Oh, boy. It doesn't have to be brand specific, right? Like, you just be an idea. But Boy, I have no idea. I didn't even consider that slot cars like a dumb slot car thing somewhere yeah. in there from when i was a kid i didn't even consider that i thought maybe bringing back hot wheels would make sense because that did was you like really hot wheels cool. or lego what was your favorite i liked hot wheels better personally. i liked lego more did you yeah well, I then like the, I why like not the, both i like the blocks and stuff let's do both i mean why lego was hot wheels was fun i think my son liked hot wheels way more too he liked the tracks yeah. and circles and the stuff. tracks and circles. i love the loop-de-loops that stuff's fun for me and you don't get that anywhere else you know it's unique are there even you can get it I was even trying to think, like, what other... Right, what other franchise thing could you shove into a game like this? A racing Is there game, like... specifically. No. I was thinking, like, there are a lot of properties that have cars. This thing on, like, Speed Racer and stuff like that. But you would have to, like, group them together to do something exactly. grand exactly. enough. I mean, they could do a kart racer inside of it in some capacity. That they haven't tackled yet. I mean, I'd be down you for know, that. They kind of awesome. Had. Yeah, a kart racer, kart racer would be neat. Like I a just little want Xbox kart to. racing. That would be great. I I want a Wreck It Ralph. I want the Wreck It Ralph kart racing game that oh, I can actually play. That's, that's what I good. really want. That's, that's what good. I want. It was great. Sugar Rush. I want to play that game so bad. Yeah, I want to play that game. That's real good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I did that. Uh, we at Nintendo Shack. Somebody asked us what our what game we wanted to make or something, and I was like, real Wreck It Ralph game. Yeah. That that either the Wreck It Ralph game with. With Ralph or Sugar Rush, the racing game. Like, no, no, I would, Sugar I would Rush. That's that. what I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, I would play Sugar the Rush. hell out of Sugar Rush. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Super fun. I would have so much fun. All right. We're almost about to close out the show. So I'm going to ask the one question in here that we should totally talk Maybe about. Deb so. says, time to start the farewell tour. What were your high points and low points of the show's current run? You've been here longer than me. I'm new here. Yeah. All things considering. Um, boy, you know... Like, this is an interesting question. I'm more interested in knowing yours because I've been a part of all of yours. So it'd be interesting to see where you go. With I, I don't think I have. The only low point for me is is saying goodbye to this show. Right. And yes, mm. it's evolving into a great thing. And I'm excited about that. But there is something to be said for transitioning away from a show that, boy, you know, I walked into this thing super nervous about it. I hadn't podcasted in a long time. And this community just like sucked me right up and like gave me a big warm hug and just accepted me right away. So there's something challenging about saying goodbye, even though it's the same community and it's a new, a, you know, new show. It still feels like a little, um, a little bittersweet. You know, I'm excited, but I'm also a little sad. High points, man. There have been so many times that we've legitimately made each other laugh so hard that we <laughs> forgot what the hell we were, fight we're talking about. And like that stuff is so good for me. Like that's the stuff. That's that's the juice for a show like this. Um, I think talking to Jeff Grubb about hair products <laughs> is pretty good. 
I enjoyed that. I love a moment where I get to like make a dumb joke and have somebody be gracious enough. I called to him out it. about that. He admitted on Twitter a couple months or a few weeks ago that he'd never seen Caddyshack. What? And I was like, this man had the audacity to come and shame me on my show. <laughs> <laughs> I should go on his show. Are you, you go kidding shame me? Him. See, but like he's such a good sport about stuff like that. Oh, and I yeah. having him on the show is an easy high point both times. I I love Jeff and a big thank you to him for just showing up for our nonsense, right? Like Of course. I don't know. But all of the people the biggest high point is all of the people who interact with me on social media or Discord, like all of the like friends, ancillary community I've made through this thing is like made me fall in love with podcasting and video games again. That's a big deal. As a thirty eight year old cynic <laughs> that's that feels like or at least someone who can be that feels like such a, a big deal so the highest high point is really the the background community that i got out of this and the friends that i've gotten out of this like that's amazing to me so and i want to hear yours because you've been here longer i mean so. the community is amazing um i was expecting the news that we announced to not go so well me too i was super nervous i was y'all. pretty certain that people are going to be really mad at me and i'm sure somebody out there is but the majority of folks were really welcoming and supportive, and I did not expect. And didn't I did not expect that? And I'm not saying that. I mean it. No, oh, like, for real. I, everybody I behind the too. scenes knows. I was like, they're not going to like me. <laughs> I thought for for sure people are going to be upset, and uh, most everybody has taken this really, really well, and it, that makes me very thankful. Yeah, very, very thankful and grateful. Yeah, these are um, these are the people. This is why I'm so high on like this is why this show is so special to me because i got those people who are willing to hold us up out of this show yeah like yeah. that's a big deal you know and you're right i am you're right to point out that i mean it's it's it sucks that we're that we're that we are going to do this transition in, in, in some ways at least mm-hmm. because we have built a community here um xbox empire is the only show on the psvg podcast network that's ever touched shack in terms of performance, and um, and I only say that to point out the fact that most don't come close. <laughs> like it's never been close, and I was really stunned, considering how rocky this show has been through the years, um, to see it ever get there. So you know, as I mentioned in, in the first episode of PSVG, I'm extremely proud of Shaq. It's Shaq was always my baby, and. The only reason that I feel any confidence to step outside as host is because I know that they'll keep it going. And the fact that, like, we had another show reach that level is extremely rewarding. And it makes me very, very proud. Mm -hmm. Um, Because this show, like, on the low points, this show has been through a lot. It's been Mm -hmm. through a lot of hosts. Um, Like Q and Mo and then Nathan and then... uh, myself and Kevin and then uh, you joining the team which is probably the highlight for me um, not only was not only uh, like just how well that worked like just how yeah. seamless all of that went yeah right like I was six hours boy. before I was considering really considering shutting the show down mm-hmm. you know seriously like I don't know if I want to do this which is you know kind of like not all that different from where I am like I'm making huh. all these changes and stuff because it's like I don't want to keep finding people to fill jobs. Like at some point right. it's just like it's, I don't know, tired, right? Like it's mm-hmm. just, it's a lot of work to find new people to incorporate them to a community and stuff like that. You know, so like with PSXP and Empire, like I could go out and look for people to fill our whole, our shoes, but I don't really want to anymore. Right. Like this right. is the team and we'll go however far this team takes us. And at that point, then we'll close. Cause I'm just, sure. I don't want to keep making more teams. I've made teams three or four times over, and I've reached the point where I'm kind of tired of finding teams. Sure. Absolutely. I get that. And that's where I was when Kevin stepped away. And lo and behold, you fall out of nowhere. And again, to tell the story for the 100th time as everybody in their cars roll their eyes, I listened to you (laughs) speak for 10 seconds, and I was like, she's perfect. She's absolutely perfect. I'm going to cry. You're going to make me get I mean, but you deserve it because you were, and I knew you were. And that's the funniest thing is you say you were nervous to join. I totally was. I didn't have a nervous bone in my body. I announced that you were joining the team five minutes after I messaged you. 
I you messaged did. Kevin. <laughs> I messaged Kevin. I was like, Elaine's going to do it. He's, he's like, who the fuck is Elaine? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this all, we told this story, but this all happened because Delvin retweeted your tweet. Yeah. And I replied to him and said, boy, I miss podcasting. And he was like, yo, that would be good, though. And that's how it all happened. Like that, just, It was totally fortuitous tweet. And, I, and it's perfect. And I, man, I'm glad I get to grow with this instead of, like, I'm glad we can grow forward into something. We start new. something together. As Let's opposed to you it. coming into this thing that yeah. I have. Yeah. You know, that's the cool yeah. thing about place of video games. The cool thing about the logo. You know, like, our I like love our logo. Empire logo. Don't get me wrong, but our Empire logo is the Xbox logo. Right. The PSVGM logo is our logo. Yeah, and cool. it's going to be great. Like, when we get I'm those hats excited. and the hoodies, they're going to look amazing. I'm very excited. So, for me, yeah, I mean, it's just fortuitous. Like, it came out of nowhere. Um, like, almost like it was destined. You know, like it was fate. And uh, just the ease, the ease at which I knew it was going to work. I just, I've done this a bunch and I've done it with a lot of different people and very seldom do you, I don't think ever actually, it's it's rare that you just have some sort of chemistry like that. Um, I agree. And we broke ground together. Uh, Xbox Empire was in Eurogamer. It was on <laughs> MSN.com. Right. It was Woo! in IGN.com. It was on Nonsense. PureXbox.com. You know, like it was uh, Kotaku. Right. Like those are articles you screenshot, you know, Xbox Empire. Jeff Grubb said on the Xbox Empire podcast, like we made ground together. Yeah. And I'm sure yeah, that's I why many good. people that listen to us listen to us. And I mean, we're glad and grateful to have you. Again, check the link below in the notes. I hope you stay with us. You should. Um, because It'll be just as good. It'll just be different. It's better. Tr- trust me. Yeah, That's there's the thing. no way It'll it be better. better. You're right. It is going to be better. <laughs> It'll and be we're going to have a lot more fun. And like, if you think for a second that I'm, we're not going to laugh just as much, and I'm not going to tell just as many stupid jokes with a bigger audience. Like, oh, come it's going to be worse. Let's yeah. go. It's going to be way worse. Yeah. Like, <laughs> buckle up, kids. Let's go. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that that's definitely my high point. My low point would probably be, you know, I was thinking earlier, I saw Yarden, he posted some gifts. I think of the episode where me and Kevin were arguing. Mm. I had so many people, I would say that that was a low point because Kevin quit. But I have so many people that told me they love that episode that I don't think it's a, a low point. I think it's a high point yeah. for the show. I, I feel like it's almost sure. like a like a, like a a crest, like the show mm-hmm. crested in a direction that day. Um, but I think the low point was just for the first, I don't know, however many years they were trying to put it on. You know, before I joined as a permanent host, I really felt for this show because we have mm-hmm. Xbox fans, especially at the time. At the time, Xbox just on the ropes, man. Right, right. Just yeah, it was sucked. brutal. All the it games were getting canceled and delayed. And then when they yeah. did come out, they were cracked down. Yep. You know, it's yep. just like, they were oh, good. Yep. God, they can't yep. win for trying. It's awful over here. Um, and I felt bad because there are people that truly love the brand. And mm-hmm. like, it's okay to, to love a brand and not like, just because you love a brand doesn't mean you are a fanboy, right? Like right, you can just right. love Xbox and want them to succeed. And I always wanted to make sure that we were showing those listeners some appreciation, giving them something, uh, even though like it felt like I could only imagine at the time, I mean, I don't even imagine cause I was there at the time. It had to be miserable if you were an Xbox fan to listen to IGN and Kotaku and Polygon and like. Rip it just apart. trounced over Trash. the head over yeah. and over and over and over right. again, you know? So during that time we struggled, we struggled with hosts and we struggled with, with consistency. And uh, even when Nathan and I were doing it and we were doing it every month, but like on weird days, like some days we do it 30 days apart. Some days we do it 60 days apart, you know, like it was, it was just strange. Um, so that was probably the, the low point for me. It's I always wanted to do better. And I'm glad that when I finally got into a position that I could, that I did. And that, I think yeah. that's why the, the, the ride to this point makes me, makes me very happy and grateful. And like the mm-hmm. fact that it culminated, like, I mean, didn't culminate, like we're, 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 we're gonna, we still got a few weeks here, but I feel like a culmination happened this year, not just for the show, but for Xbox at E3. I agree. And the fact that, was that a great we were moment. like, watch that show with Sean and Ryan, who've basically been there every step of the way as well. Like mm-hmm. with the Xbox Drive, they started before, but like we were still doing Xbox Empire back when they were doing the Xbox Drive. We just weren't weekly, but right. like we've all been in the same Discord channels talking about Xbox for years. And the fact that we could all watch it together and have a great time and see the volcano great. and Forza, and like we were just so excited, and it felt yeah. great. Like like the loop had finally made it back around, you know, like from yes. Fable yes. Legends being pulled oh, from. Yeah. 
the dragon game being canceled with platinum scale bounds canceled you right, know that like, had a name yeah for like e- every th- e- uh what was the other one what was the even the halo delay that of was course. a hard moment yeah that was a rough moment that did not feel good for any of us you know yep. that sucks and to see I, it all I, come back together game yeah. pass with this excellent show which is it feels very very fun and Optimistic. It feels like it almost feels like a good time to to leave this show sit and move into something broader because everybody is in a level playing field. It's all different. Nintendo is doing their thing. People who have Nintendo consoles are happy. Microsoft is doing their thing. Same with Xbox fans and PlayStation fans. It's like the right time to say it's okay to step back from individual shows and just our powers combine Captain Planet this thing because now we can have a ball with it. You know, but I'm not the heart kid. Just in case anybody <laughs> asks me, I am not the heart kid. Don't start with me. Just, just want to see. Uh, did you see Sean in the chat? Oh, Yarden, yeah, I did. Yarden, you're so sweet. Chelsea is. Yeah, I like salt of there. Chelsea. She's she's amazing. I would. Probably she's a thousand times better than Sean. <laughs> <laughs> and I already love Sean. Right? That's that's you're rude. Gosh, she's great. We'll have to have Chelsea then, over to PSVG. Well, that would be fun. Yeah. See, like we have options and we have wiggle and we have the ability to talk about it whatever the hell we want. And I think it's a great time to put these shows kind of on the shelf and move into something broader i think nothing but good things i think i already feel a reprieve just from making the announcement yeah you feel relieved you felt so good relieved you felt so good i I do um in the sense that like all of the following all of the playing all of the energy that i put into it i can just kind of not give up but you know like take a take a break take a breath relax the energy where you want it to go yeah instead of where you feel like it has to go there is a difference and and the longer you put time into what you think you have to do, the the faster you burn out. It's like that with anything. And then yeah. you just don't love it anymore. And you should love it. This is, we do this for free, y'all. This is like something we should love doing. And yep. when we love doing it, it's better to listen to it. So this lets you fall in love with it again. You know? Mm-hmm. Look at us all warm and fuzzy. God, it's gross. <laughs> I hate it. Thanks, Devin Dev. asked a question. <laughs> Should have Thanks, saved it for Deb. the last episode, but no, I wanted to do, do it, it now. now. We're we're riding the high right now. This is oh, a good yeah. time to do it. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. This is we could you guys can clip this out and hold on to it. And but I just sometimes you gotta you see a question you're like I want to talk about that. So that's what we did. I think that'll probably this is a good place to end this week's show. Yeah, I think that's a good place. All right. So before we bounce out of here, as per usual, a shout out to our Patreon supporters at the on air producer level. I'll give you the names, but. A thank you to everybody who supports the show, obviously. Um, everybody who's chatted in Discord, people who've accepted me into this community and who are willing to roll with us into the next thing. You know, that's you guys are rad. Uh, I'm ET Dragon on Twitter. Donnie is Eat the Hype or hang oh. out with us in the Discord. Let's do this. Um, I post nothing but nonsense on Twitter. Food items, cats, it's the best. All right. Our on air producers from Patreon Michael Masick, Edwin Callow, Stephen Keller, Nick Creature, Ben Moxham. Nick Fallhaber, Paul Calicote, Kyle Heyman, Devin Tyus, Josh Borbone, RJ Kern, Horse Girl 69, Zach Adams, and Joe Wilson. And Thanks AJ Pentecost. Oh, yeah, that's right. AJ. Just joined the Patreon. Like, wh- how awesome. So, like, just, yeah, thank you. Like, thank you so much. Uh, all the tweets have made me feel the warm fuzzies in a real big way. Like, I'm an emotional person. There could be crying. Like, just, just be careful, kids. The tattoos don't tell the whole story. All right. I think we're out of here, Donnie. I'll do it. This, this has been a good show. Okay, kids. Until next week, play some video games. Peace, folks. Peace. <laughs>